you look at how ubiquitous electronics have become, everybody carries electronics. They're all over the world. A phone is small, but when you multiply it by five billion, it gets to be a very significant number. We have to be mindful and thoughtful about how we're going to deal with those handsets from a recycling and sustainability point of view. At the design phase, we look for ways to make that device more easily recycled at the end of its life. Designing for the environment is all about thinking ahead. We put a lot of consideration into the way the product is built, the way it's going to come apart, and the materials that are inside of them. We emphasize what goes into the phone because we understand that what goes into the phone at some point comes out of the phone. The designers have by far the greatest impact on what we're going to be able to do. That's why AT&T's relationship with the manufacturers is so important. We can feed back information to them about what we're facing in end of life that can impact future phone designs. Packaging is also very, very important. And the reason why is because packaging is the first thing consumers see, and it's the first thing that they're likely to throw away. So it has the most immediate impact to our environment. So we now, as part of our sustainability standards, require non-petroleum-based inks and coatings. We also require post-consumer materials be used as part of the cardboard or the paper. Over the last five years, we've reduced the size of the box that the phone comes in by 70%. Reducing packaging size is also an added benefit because we're able to ship products more efficiently and therefore we create less greenhouse gas emissions. When we receive a phone, the first priority for us is to see if we can reuse that phone. And the key to that is that we can erase the data and the phone's in good working condition, and then we can put it back into the marketplace. That's best from an environmental perspective. If we can't reuse the phone as a whole phone, we're going to demanufacture it or take it apart. And then we're going to look and see what parts like the LCD or the camera can be reused. Finally, what's left is actually recycled. So we're going to recover the materials, the plastics, the metals, the copper, the gold. And they go back into products that we use normally every day, such as cell phones, PCs, and tablets. When someone puts a cell phone into a recycling bin, it's a way of giving that cell phone new life. One of the biggest obstacles that we have is just simply getting old phones from our customers. We want consumers to feel confident that they can turn in those phones and they'll be processed in the most environmentally friendly way and also safe from a data protection standpoint. If we can get consumers to think of the phone just like they think of a lot of other recycling, then they'll be more apt to turn it in rather than sticking it in a drawer somewhere and not ever recycling it. What we're very proud of at AT&T is that proceeds from those devices go to charitable operations. But it all really starts with our customers and with consumers. They've got to start that process by donating their old used handsets to our recycling process. AT&T is out on the forefront working with consumers. They know the consumers more and more want environmentally designed products. Our partners, whether they be our recycling partners or our manufacturing partners, all understand how important sustainability is to us. We're all growing through this, and we are all working together to make certain that the end is constantly in mind.